In the previous video, we saw how to use a relay to control different types of devices and use the microcontroller to control that relay. Now, relays have some problems, some disadvantages. They're relatively slow, relatively large, and they can require a decent amount of current in order for them to switch. So an alternative is to use a chip, and that chip that we're going to be using here is the ULN2003. So let's go ahead and take a look at how it works and how we can use it. As I mentioned, it is a chip. The ULN2003 is a 16-pin chip. And there's our pin 1 indicator, and here's pin 1. So we have a number of inputs on this side, a number of outputs on this side. So our microcontroller would be connected, let's say, to this particular input. So we'd use an output of the microcontroller to control this. And what we're controlling is the output of this ULN2003. So this is our ULN. 2003. So let's say we're going to control a motor. Whatever we're going to control has to be within the voltage range of this ULN 2003. It's fairly wide. It also has to be within the current limitations of this particular chip, which is approximately a half an amp. Uh, double check the data sheet, make sure that you're using the correct voltage and you're not exceeding the current. Now, there's ways of uh, configuring this so that you can actually go over the amount and do that safely. But I'm going to show you the basics here. All right, so we have our motor. And let's say this motor is going to be connected and it needs 9.6 volts. So let's connect this up. The motor would get connected to the positive end of our power source. So this is our 9.6 volt battery. Here's our negative end. So it's going to get connected to ground. This pin number 8, remember 16 pin chip, is also a ground. We need to make sure all of our grounds are tied together. So these grounds need to be tied. So this is uh, this pin 8. Make sure your battery's negative is also connected to that. So what happens here then is whenever this pin goes high, we would control that with our microcontroller, it is then going to make a connection internally to ground. That would then complete this circuit turning the motor on. We could have multiple devices. This has seven outputs on here. Three, four, five, six, seven. Now there's a another pin here that's also for making connection to something else that's our uh, pin number nine but what we're dealing with are these ones right here these are our outputs that we're using and the ones that are on the other side are the inputs that control those four five six seven so we use these inputs to control these outputs. We could have multiple motors. We could have a motor and a light. We can have a motor, a light, and a relay. So we can control a number of different devices with our microcontroller very easily. Our microcontroller limited maybe to 20 milliamps, but this ULN uh, potentially up to a half of an amp per output. So let's take a look at how we would use our development board and the ULN2003 that's on it for controlling something like the relay or a motor. So here's our microcontroller. This is our ULN2003. So let's go ahead and let me see if I can write that on there going sideways. ULN2003. Not too bad for writing sideways. And so this is our pin 1 indicator up here. So here's pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Over to the other side, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So let's say we're going to control this relay. We need to take, let's say we're using B0. We're going to run a wire over to the input side. So this port 
connected to this input, that means we're controlling this output. So if you remember, this is going to be syncing. So we need then to connect the output to the negative. That then means our positive, the other end of our relay, needs to get the positive voltage. So that's this side of this eight strip header here. Now the grounds are already connected on the board so we don't need to make any internal or external connections. They are internally connected. Now if we wanted to we could run a wire from our ground here over to this pin number eight over here but that wire is not necessary because they are connected on the board. So now whenever B0 goes high it's going to cause this ULN to make a connection internally to ground. That would complete the circuit, allowing current to flow through the coil, back through here to ground, completing that circuit, energizing this coil. We can, as I showed in the previous example, we could control a motor. So let's take and get our motor. And let's say we have it down here. Let's say we are connecting it up to our 9.6 volt battery. Remember our grounds need to be connected. Here is our negative on our battery over here. Here is our positive. So we need definitely to run a wire from here over to the negative of our battery. We also need to run the end of this motor up to whatever output we're going to use to control it. We also need to have our marker controller controlled, so we need a wire going from the input over, let's say again, it's B0. So now, whenever B0 goes high, the connection is completed between the output and the ground completing this circuit allowing current to flow causing this motor to rotate. The disadvantage or the issue, and this is true of the relay as well, is that we cannot cause this motor to reverse. Current will only flow through here in one direction causing the motor to rotate in one direction. What this will allow us to do, because this ULN 2003 is relatively fast, we can do speed control on this motor. Because the relay's slow, we cannot do speed control on a motor connected to this. We can, however, with the ULN 2003, and I'll show you how to do that in a later video. All right, so that's how we can use the ULN 2003 to control devices that require more current or different voltage or both than what our microcontroller is using.